Si acaso se me olvida, si acaso se me escapa. Si acaso se me nubla la pasión en mi mirada. Llévame al madero, al rincón de nuestro encuentro. Llévame al lugar donde empezó nuestra amistad. Llévame a la Llévame a la cruz Si acaso se me olvida Si acaso se me escapa Si acaso se me nubla La pasión en mí Morning, District Church. I'm so glad you can join us this Sunday. Um, if you're able and you'd like to, we'd love for you to stand and sing with us. Um, as yeah, we're just gonna worship this morning um, and praise God for all He's done.
keep on getting better. You 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 keep on. us into this new year. You are so great that you've kept us through all of our pain and our sorrow and all of our joys and our triumphs. You're so good, God. We owe it all to you. You're so faithful. And so we'll sing this song to worship you.
something for you. Lord, you are faithful. Let's sing this over your song. hardship, God. You have never left us astray, God. You have never lost a battle that we have been faced with. Even if we can't carry it, God, you can carry it. You can carry anything. God, we thank you so much for everything that you take for us so that we don't have to bear it. God, we we put this year in your hands, God. We know that you can do great things, God, and we know you're going to do great things. Thank you, God.
District Church. I am so excited to be with you all this morning. My name is Claire Debnam and I serve as the executive assistant to the lead and executive pastor. And good morning church. My name is Hugo Castro and I serve here as the, uh, the district church as a small group leader and a lot many titles but that doesn't matter. So. If you are here with us for the very first time, we just want to say welcome. And if you've been with us, welcome. We have um, an event today, immediately after the service at 1115 that we want you, our new people and those individuals who have been with us but just hasn't taken the step to kind of get connected, to, we just invite you to meet us, to get a little face to face, to learn our story. So our host is going to be dropping a link in the description box right now and immediately following our service. We want you to be there and meet us so that you can just learn more about who who we are. Yeah, that's awesome. I know almost five years ago when I went to the newcomers dinner, it was really impactful for me and I still have very good friendships from people that I met that night. Uh, also to the families out there or parents that would like to rem I would like to remind you that we have services for all ages, literally from one until 99 plus. Yes. Uh, our Kid City team are doing a phenomenal job in discipling our children. Karen and her team and Lindsay and the Youth City team. So if you have kids and teens at home, please connect them with us and we would love to have them be a part of our community. If you even have a friend who's searching for a church for their children, please invite them and we would love to host them. Details are on our website and you can also scan the QR code to take you there that appears there. Definitely. Now Hugo, have you been on our morning prayer calls? I have. I, it's at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Yeah. Okay. so. Hugo may have missed some, you may have missed some, but that doesn't matter because we have seven more days where you can come and worship with us in the morning, pray with us with fellow believers in Christ, where we are praying and fasting uh, diligently and boldly for our nation, for our community, community, for our neighborhood, for your family members. We want you to join us for the next seven days at 7 a.m. Join us. Come be with us. The link is in the description box where you will find our prayer guide. Um, and just add that to your calendar. It's so exciting. Yeah. Let, me, let me just say this. On day one, you know, things began to bubble up for me because I personally had decided to fast. And see, see, fasting just isn't in my blood. You know, I can eat like all day. And so to be like sacrificing and then things began to bubble up to the surface like I knew that I was impatient but I learned that I was like more impatient than I realized and I was able to just like Lord you have to take this on because I cannot deal with this so those are the kinds of things that fasting does it brings clarity so definitely join us am I just too hype right now no, you're good I mean for me like the fasting each morning at 7 a.m. and being able to be with other school price just set the, the mood for the rest of my day yeah that's been really helpful for me to have the structure and really grateful that in the midst of a pandemic we have zoom and I've 
ability to like break with like 200 other people that are showing up at 7 a.m. So props to you all that are waking up super early to do that. Yes. And, and it was hard for me, but it's And you know it. what? It's 200 people plus on our line. But did you know that there's like over 20 other churches doing that in the D.C. area? I didn't know that. As well as those across the country. So can you just imagine how many people are praying at the same time? Join us. Will you join us? Well, you have a few more days, so I mean, you gotta match Clara's excitement to be there. So, like, she's at 7 a.m. ready to go. So, yeah. Uh, also, I want to let you know that uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have started the day uh, with the corporate term of prayer, like Clara mm -hmm. was saying. Uh, and this is what community is all about. We've been in this pandemic for a long time, praying together, encouraging each other, and doing life together. Here at the District Church, small groups are the core of who we are. We believe that each of us should be connected to the larger community yes. and most importantly, a smaller community. On the week of January 25th, we're gonna be launching our small groups and we're hoping that each of us will choose to join and be part of the current groups. No matter if you're in California, if you're in Europe, if you're in Asia, if you've been joining us online and you wanna come to a, school, a, a small group, please connect with us. Come and let us do life together in the midst of the pandemic. Do not walk alone. Choose today to connect and belong. There's going to be a link that's going to be posted on the chat or visit our website to see the small groups that are around the D.C. area. Yes, definitely get connected, guys. And as we come to the close before worship begins, let's just... Um Get, a, get in the spirit of giving. You know, it, you know the Bible talks about it being more blessed to give than to receive. If you are um, one who has a heart for giving, this is your time. You know, there's been so many ways in which our church has blessed people during, during this pandemic. And we just want to just... Um, be good stewards over our money. Everything that we have belongs to God anyway. And this is just our way to say, you know what, God, we're going to give you back just a portion of that which you have given us. So won't Amen. you give on today? That link is in the description box right now. You can go to our website. You can give to our general budget. You can give to Advent. You can give to Benevolence Fund. What else? We, we have DC so many different ways. Wherever you see fit, feel free to give and be a blessing to someone else. He'll go close us out in prayer. Amen. All right. Heavenly Father, I just want to give you praise and honor for everything you've done in our lives. It's, it's been a really tough start of 2021. Yes, God. Uh, for, especially for those uh, here in the U.S. and here in Washington, D.C. I'll pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. That your peace will just overflow over this city and over this country, yes, Lord. God. And I pray for your children, for those that call you, um, God, that will rise up to be peacemakers among the nations, Lord. I pray for reconciliation, Lord. I pray for our hearts and our minds to reconcile to you and to each other, to our neighborhoods, to our cities, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, we able to speak bold statements and bold prayers. Yes, and I Lord. pray that the message that we're going to be hearing from Amy today will be just... Um, just potentially and exponentially just uh, span our minds and our hearts and our love and our understanding towards you, Lord. Let us be bold in your name, Jesus. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Graham, and I serve as the pastor of spiritual care here at the District Church. It's good to be with you all today. We're just three weeks into the new year, and there's already been some really interesting and difficult days. My hope and prayer is that as this inauguration takes place this week, that it will be a peaceful transfer of power and that some of the evil things that we've already witnessed this year will not be present in our city or anywhere else. It's been so nice to be with others in prayer every morning at 7 a.m. I really hope that you've enjoyed that time as well. And if you haven't joined us yet, I hope that you will join us for this last collective week of prayer and fasting. It's been a really powerful time. During the first week, we even had someone stay on after we finished praying collectively and they shared a prayer request. By the next morning, they were able to report that their prayers had been answered. So you never know what God is going to do when we pray bold prayers. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited that our church's theme for 2021 is Be Bold. My hope is that this theme would completely change how we engage in this new year. I hope that we might be bold in our faith, 
bold in our prayers, and that we would be bold in sharing the story of Jesus with others. Aaron and Pastor Kevin have both kicked off this year with two really great messages to guide us and to give us a vision for what it looks like to live with boldness this year. Well, there's a popular quote that has often been used to describe how we are to share the story of Jesus. The quote is this, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. It's a nice quote, and it's one that makes those of us who grew up in the church feel kind of superior to the evangelistic approaches of our youth. No more door-to-door conversations, no more awkward moments where you're encouraged to ask specific questions to lead someone to the Lord. Now we can just live our lives and pretend that everything that we do is pointing people to Jesus. We don't even have to say a thing because they will know that we are Christians by the things we do, by the way that we live, and by the social media posts we make, right? It's a perfect utopia of Christian living. Well, this quote has always been associated with St. Francis of Assisi. However, I hate to burst your bubble, St. Francis never said any such thing. None of those he discipled or any of the biographers who studied his life say that these words actually ever came out of his mouth. It doesn't show up in any of his writings either. While there's a nice and good sentiment in the statement, encouraging us to be sure that we are living out the grace and truth of the gospel. The notion, as it is typically presented, is neither practical nor faithful to the gospel of Christ. It also doesn't align with St. Francis's own practice. This quote has been used time and time again as what I believe is an excuse to not actually share our faith in words. However, Romans 10.14 tells us, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? People might think that you're a nice person if you are serving the poor. They might believe that you are very generous if you're giving large portions of your income away. They might even think that you're really compassionate and unselfish if you're constantly bringing people gifts or thinking of others. But unless you actually say words like this, do you know that Jesus loves you? Do you know that God's one desire for your life is to just be in relationship with you? Do you know that Jesus died on the cross for you to remove your shame and to help bring freedom to your life? Do you know those things? Unless you actually say words, your actions don't carry any weight and they ultimately become about you. Well, today I want, to, I want us to return to grade school and answer these three questions. Who, what, and how? Who is to boldly proclaim? What are we boldly proclaiming? And how do we boldly proclaim it? As we answer these questions, I want to spend some time in the book of Acts, chapter 4. This passage is all about speaking boldly for Christ. So I'm going to do a little bit of paraphrasing and just tell you the story. The apostles, Peter and John, had just spent three years with Jesus. They had witnessed his love, his care, and his miracles. They had witnessed his death, his resurrection, and his ascension to the Father in heaven. They had also experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, which you can read about in Acts chapter 2. To say that they were fired up and ready to go for God is kind of an understatement. Let me set the stage. The scene is the temple in Jerusalem. There are guards surrounding the temple to help keep things in order. The Sadducees were present. They were a small but powerful Jewish religious sect that did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. They were also the ones who benefited financially from cooperating with the Romans. Most of those who planned and carried out Jesus' arrest and crucifixion were from this sect. Well, Peter and John, they show up to the temple during the late afternoon prayers, and they begin boldly proclaiming Jesus and the resurrection from the dead. They also healed a lame man. Well, the Sadducees were not happy about this, so they arrested Peter and John. They held them in jail overnight. Despite their arrest... 
many of those who heard their bold proclamation of Jesus became believers. It says that the number of believers grew to 5,000 that day. Well, the next morning, John and Peter were brought before the high priest and some of the elders and teachers of the law. And the question that these leaders asked was, by what power or what name did you do this? Meaning, who gave you authority to boldly speak to those praying in the temple and to heal the lame man? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, that's a key line, of course, basically says, if we're being called into question for healing a lame man, and if people are wondering how he was healed, it's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Well, now remember, the Sadducees who Peter and John are speaking to do not believe in the resurrection of the dead. So Peter's being a bit provocative or bold in his speech. Then Peter goes on to boldly proclaim, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved in Acts 4.12. This, my friends, is the gospel. Salvation, being saved from the suffering and the darkness of this world, is found in no one else except Jesus. There is no other name, no other person, no other way to be saved except through Jesus. So when the high priests and the teachers of the law saw Peter and John's courage, knowing that they were just ordinary unschooled men, they were astonished. They knew that these men had been with Jesus. And since they saw the man who had been healed, they couldn't really say anything. How many of you feel like you're ordinary or unschooled when it comes to boldly proclaiming the gospel? Maybe you feel like you're not qualified to share the story of Jesus. Or maybe you feel like you don't have all the answers. Well, after conferring together, the teachers of the law came to Peter and John and commanded that they not speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Now, I would have loved to have seen their faces, Peter's and John's faces in the, mo- in the moment. I used to tell Aaron when he would get a certain look on his face that he had his evangi face on, like evangelism face. It's this intense look in his eyes with a strong sense of urgency, ready to tell the world about Jesus. I kind of feel like that's the look that the apostles probably got, So with their version of Evangi face, they boldly proclaimed, they replied to these religious leaders, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him, meaning Jesus? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After some further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them. Because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Now, I take issue with that last line, by the way, because, come on, they're implying that 40 is old. But after Peter and John were given a good talking to by the chief priests and other religious leaders, they went back to their own community to let them know what has happened. I'm sure their friends were like, hey, guys, why didn't you come home last night? Peter's wife was probably like, yeah, honey, uh, where were you? But after their friends heard what happened, they immediately raised their voices in prayer to God. They began their prayers with praise and adoration to the Lord. Then they spoke about the truth of the God of ages and the truth of all that God has done. And then their prayers turned to their own situation, asking for God's intervention. They prayed Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They were praying for God to show up with even more power and authority through the Holy Spirit. And boy, did God show up. The scripture says, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. 
Now, let's get to answering our grade school questions, starting with who. Who is to boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus? The best place to look to start answering this question is in Scripture. Matthew 28, 18 says, Then Jesus came to them, the disciples, and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This passage is known as the Great Commission. Jesus told it to his disciples. And if you are a follower of Jesus, this command also applies to you. Also, as opposed to the Old Testament belief system that only some were called to be priests, the New Testament presents a new belief system through the death and resurrection of Jesus. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. If you have chosen to follow Jesus, you are a priest. If you consider yourself a disciple of Jesus, then you're a priest. I feel like Oprah with the cars. You're a priest, and you're a priest, and you're a priest. We're all priests. Not just those of us who stand up here and preach for a living. We are all called to live out the Great Commission. We all have intimate and open access to the Lord. Therefore, we're all called to share the gospel of Christ with those around us. And yes, we are meant to use words. Actions, of course, but also words. In Acts chapter 4, verse 20, Peter and John have just been told that they're not allowed to speak in the name of Jesus. Well, instead of allowing fear or shame to rule them, they boldly speak. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. They couldn't help but speak it. They were so passionate about their encounter with Christ, they couldn't help but boldly proclaim. By the way, the word bold in Greek, since we're using it a lot this year, is parousia. And it literally means to speak everything or to speak freely. It's where we get our freedom of speech belief here in the U.S., To be bold is to speak freely, specifically from the public square or out in public. Speaking boldly means that after you speak, you leave behind something that deserves to be remembered. Well, I found this very interesting. If we're calling all of those in our church to be bold in 2021, we are actually calling all of us to speak freely and publicly about Jesus. How does that make you feel? Are you ready for that kind of charge? If the answer to our who question is that we're all called to speak the truth about Jesus, the next question that I have to ask myself is, well, why don't I do it more? And I think the first thing to consider is that we all tend to speak freely about the most important things in our lives. We will be bold about the things that we're passionate about our favorite sports teams, our favorite shows that we're watching, house renovations, recipes that we've cooked, the latest politics, whatever's going on in our job, the places we're traveling, or the various justice issues that we have strong convictions about. But how many of us speak freely and boldly about Jesus? So I want you just to take a minute, do a brief inventory of your life. What do you spend the majority of your time talking about or promoting? Do you speak freely or boldly about what Jesus is doing in your life? There may be some of us who will be bold about something on social media, maybe even speaking boldly for Christ, but we're less inclined or perhaps never speak boldly about Jesus in person. It's often easy to be bold about something on social media. It's quite another thing to look someone in the eye and share the love of Jesus with them or to pray with someone who's ready to receive the grace of Christ. If, as followers of Christ, we are all called to boldly speak about the truth of Jesus, how can you see this playing out in your life? 
Have there been times in your life when you've been able to speak boldly for Christ? Can you think of a time when you shared the truth of Christ and you actually got to see change in someone's life? Well, when I was 15 years old, I had just traveled with a Christian singing group for the summer. Believe me, it sounds way more important and cooler than it actually was. Um, and I want you to look at that early 1990s style. Wow, I thought I was so cool. However, during that time, I was surrounded by other followers of Jesus. And after each concert, we were encouraged to share our faith with the people in attendance. Well, sometimes it was awkward and sometimes I was sometimes it was encouraging, but it helped build my confidence to boldly speak the truth of Jesus. Just continually doing that. I returned home that summer to news that my grandmother, my dad's mom, had been diagnosed with terminal cancer. It had spread throughout her entire body. And I wasn't super close to my grandmother, but I did know that she did not have a relationship with Jesus. So this newfound confidence and being led by the Spirit, I felt empowered to go to the hospital and share the love and truth of Christ with her. It wasn't enough for me to just sit with her in her suffering in silence. If she was going to believe in Jesus, she had to hear the gospel truth. I actually had to speak words. Now remember, I'm only 15 at the time, but my personality was as it is today. So I marched in there alone into her hospital room. I made my parents stay out in the hallway um, as I went into her room. And through the power of the Spirit, I was able to share the gospel with my grandmother. Now, after sharing with me uh, that she didn't think she would be well enough um, to be able to go to church or even leave the hospital, I assured her that Jesus didn't care about that. He just wanted to forgive her of her sins and invite her into relationship with him. Well, praise God, after I asked her if she wanted to receive Christ, she said yes. I had the honor of praying with her, and she received the gift of God's grace that day. There was a peace that transcends all understanding that fell upon her. Even her daughter, who came in from out of town to see her, said that she just seemed so at peace. She passed away about eight days later, and I know her soul was at rest with the Lord. Now, there were parts of that whole experience that seemed awkward or made me a bit uncomfortable, but my momentary discomfort allowed for her to gain access to the keys of the kingdom of God. Life is not about being comfortable. The gospel of Jesus is about demonstrating love. And we must use our words, allowing our actions to follow. Now that we know the answer to who is to boldly proclaim, the next question is what are we boldly proclaiming? Once again, let me start with scripture. John 1.14 the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Romans 10, 9, if you confess and declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Then again from today's passage, as Peter and John boldly proclaimed, Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. I could go on and on sharing scripture after scripture of the truth of Jesus, what should we boldly proclaim? Here it is. We have all fallen short of God's glory. We are all in need of a Savior. That's the starting point. Once we acknowledge this, once we acknowledge our sin and help others acknowledge their sin, then we can move on to the answer. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am the worst and we can actually all say that. If you just confess out loud with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, 
seeking forgiveness for your sins, you will be saved. It's so simple. That's it. That's the gospel message. That's what we are to be boldly proclaiming. Our final question, and I would argue uh, most importantly, the question of how. How are we to boldly proclaim? Acts 4, 8 says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, in Matthew 10, 19, Jesus told his disciples, including Peter and John, but when they arrest you, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. And then Acts 4, 23 and 24, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people, reported all that the chief priests and the elders had to say to them. And when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. How must we boldly proclaim? We must always be led by the Spirit, covered in prayer, and grounded in the truth of Scripture. Peter and John were only doing what Jesus told them to do. They were led by the Holy Spirit. They weren't worried about what they would say. They ended up speaking bold truth to power. Being led by the Spirit simply means that it's not rehearsed. You are given supernatural confidence or boldness to not worry about your reputation or how your message will be received. Your only concern is being obedient to Christ, bringing glory to God and fulfilling your God-given mission. If it's done in love, through the power of the Spirit, people will see that. So even if they disagree with the content of what you're sharing, they will see your heart. We can only speak the truth of Christ when we are filled with the Spirit. Otherwise, our words and our speaking could come across as prideful or self-righteous. It would be as if we were trying to prove something or just checking off some box. Now, I shared the story about how I had the opportunity to lead my grandmother to the Lord, and you might not have caught it, but when I shared that story, I said that I was led by the Spirit and empowered by the Spirit as I went in to share with her because it was God pursuing my grandmother. I just happened to be the willing instrument he chose to use. However, after I had this experience, seeing my grandmother choose to follow Jesus, I kind of thought I was all of a sudden like a superhero evangelist. So I lived with a sense of urgency around it. So when my uncle got sick and was in the hospital, knowing he too did not know Jesus, I felt like it was my responsibility all of a sudden to just go in and get him saved as well. So I marched up in his hospital room and I tried to lead him to Jesus. Well, he would have none of it. He did not respond well to my presentation. However, maybe a week or so later, the hospital chaplain came to visit him, and my uncle did decide to follow Christ that day. He also passed away not too many days later. The truth is, with my grandmother, I was led by the Spirit. But with my uncle, I was led by my pride. I was trying to lead him to the Lord in my own strength. I was self-righteous, and God had to remind me that he is the one who saves, not me. While it was a humbling experience, it was a good reminder that we can only boldly proclaim Christ when we are led by the Spirit. I'm sure there was nothing wrong with the words that I used to share Christ with my uncle, but they were my words and not from the Spirit. They lacked power and authority because I was speaking in my own strength. The apostles Peter and John were ordinary, unschooled men. But when they were filled with the Spirit, they were speaking with power and courage from a place of authority. Their words carried a weight and a disregard for their own reputation. They were unconcerned about what anyone thought of them or what anyone might do to them. They were singularly focused on the mission and vision Christ had given them. I have to say that if we are speaking boldly and it is not led by the Spirit, 
then our free speech or our bold proclamation can turn into deplorable and evil actions and words. I would argue that what we saw in our city on Wednesday, January 6th, was a form of bold proclamation. People were speaking freely in a public square, but it was not spirit-led. It was not grounded in truth, and it was not the gospel of Jesus. So suffice it to say that holding a Jesus Saves poster or waving a Jesus flag does not equate to a spirit-led, bold proclamation. These pictures do not represent Jesus or the gospel in any way, shape, or fashion. Woe to anyone who misrepresents the gospel and Jesus like this. The events of that day, that quote-unquote bold proclamation, was led by pride, evil, and sin, and was as far from the truth of Christ as anyone could get. If we as followers of Christ want the truth of Jesus to actually be known, his love, his compassion, his grace and kindness to be proclaimed, then we must all choose to speak. And we must always be led by the Spirit, covered in prayer and grounded in the truth of God's word. Peter and John knew that if they were to continue to boldly speak the truth, it must always be Spirit-led, covered in prayer and rooted in Scripture. Immediately after they were released from the high priest, they didn't go to the bar and start talking to one another like, man, can you believe those guys? I can't believe they tried to command us not to speak in the name of Jesus. They're such losers. They're so blind. They also didn't just run away in fear and decide to never share the truth of Jesus again. They ran to their community. They ran to the Lord in prayer, and they ran to the truth of Scripture. They were spirit-led, covered in prayer and grounded in the truth of God's word, and God showed up. We are calling all those in our church community, whether you are in D.C. or another state or another country, to be bold in 2021. If we are all called to boldly proclaim the truth of Jesus, how can you live that out this week? We'll just start with this week. How can you do it this week? Maybe that question feels really intimidating. So let me ask it in a more gentle way. How has Jesus changed your life? What does Jesus mean to you? Is there someone in your life that you would really like to tell about the difference that Jesus has made for you? I know for me, I would not want to live a single day or take another breath without knowing the love, acceptance, and security of Jesus. He truly satisfies the deepest longings of my heart that no relationship status, no amount of children, no job, no location or vacation, or no tangible thing can ever satisfy. I've experienced more freedom, through the grace and truth of Jesus than any governmental policy or seven-figure salary could ever provide. I'm honored to be a servant of the Lord and a co-laborer with Christ. I feel emboldened, not just bold, but emboldened to tell you all through the power of the Spirit, bathed in prayer and truth, that I am honored to be one of your pastors, where you allow me to boldly proclaim the truth of Christ to you all. Will you pray with me? God, if anyone is hearing today's message, and maybe this is the first time that they have ever heard the gospel truth preached. God, if, if anyone is ready to respond to you today, Lord, I pray that they would pray this prayer. God, I ask that you forgive me for the ways that I have failed you. Forgive me for the sin in my life. Allow me to enter into relationship with you, Lord, to receive your grace, your mercy, and your truth. Allow me to follow alongside you the rest of my days. 
if anyone is in that place today and praying that prayer, I pray, God, that they would have the courage to let our prayer team or our staff know. God, I thank you for the way that your spirit leads and the way that you pursue our hearts. God, for those of us who have already decided a long time ago to follow you, and yet we lack the courage, the boldness to proclaim your truth. God, I pray that this year, this moment, this season of our lives would be a turning point. That we would share your gospel truth and that we would use actual words and not just hope that people figure it out. God, empower us through your spirit to speak your truth, to speak your grace, to demonstrate your love and compassion and to communicate that to those around us. We love you, Lord. We're so grateful that you've chosen to rescue us. May we receive your love and your grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We pray blessings over you this week as you find ways to boldly proclaim the gospel, to speak freely about Jesus to those in your life. Now go walking in the spirit, bathed in prayer and grounded in the truth of God's word. Amen. Si acaso se me olvida, si acaso se me escapa Si acaso se me nubla la pasión en mi mirada Llévame al madero, al rincón de nuestro encuentro. Llévame al lugar donde empezó nuestra amistad. Llévame a la Llévame a la cruz Si acaso se me olvida Si acaso se me escapa Si acaso se me nubla La pasión en mí
Llévame a la...